Hey guys, it's Darren. Quick, easy video today on how to check the fluid levels in a marine battery. I'm also going to show you how to check them in a golf car battery. Uh, it's a little different. So some of the things you need. Now, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry when doing this stuff. So, you know, I'm using some rubber gloves. You are dealing with acid, so you really don't want to get this stuff on your skin or on your clothes because it will eat a hole in your clothes. Also, safety glasses, must. You know, you don't want that stuff splashing up in your eye at all. Paper towels, clean up any spills that we may have, and I'll show you how to deal with that if we have a spill. When you're checking your fluid levels, especially on a marine battery, this is just a typical marine battery. Everstark, came from Walmart. I think it's 100 bucks. It'll run a trolling motor, or uh, this one's actually on an emergency backup system that I have for, for power. These are three things that you're pretty much going to have to have to check these. Uh, this is distilled water. Make sure it's distilled water. No other kind of water. Just distilled. Not creek water, not anything else. You want pure distilled water. And it's about 65 cents to a dollar most places. You're going to want one of these. It's a hydrometer. A couple bucks. You can get that in most automotive places. It has, if you'll see, it's got four little balls in there. And that kind of tells you the charge of your battery. If all four of them are floating, it's going to be a good charge. If you've got one of them that's down, you know, it's going to, there's a little chart that comes with the hydrometer. It tells you what uh, what's going on. And you're going to need a screwdriver to pop off the caps. Also, a funnel helps a lot if you're having to top off the, uh, the acid in the, in the battery. This helps with spills and stuff, and you don't want to overfill these things. Okay, one of the first things you got to do is we got to come in and pop the caps off. This is a 12-volt battery, so it should have six holes across. If it's a 6-volt battery, it'll only have three. Just going to pop those off a little bit. Before I remove this top, I'm going to tap it a little bit to remove any excess liquid that may be on the caps. Now you can see the fluid levels. Are, if you can see, there's a little, like a little slot. And I don't know if my camera will get down in there enough or not. You can see the fluid down in here, and you can see on this back side of the battery. I'm hoping you can see like a little, like a little slot. It'll be right about here. Now you want the fluid levels to be at the bottom of the plastic. You don't want them coming up into the plastic at all. You want that just to be about level. Now to do a test, we're just going to take our hydrometer. And I'm going to actually start over here on the right side and work my way left. So I'm just going to take this and put it in, and I'm going to suck up some of the fluid. Now I'm not going to take this out because I can read all four of those balls are up at the top so this battery's got a pretty good charge on it also the fluid levels in it are pretty decent they're about where I want them to be check the next cell now you can just snap the cap back on we're gonna to move to the second one now I can see I've got one cell that's a little low on water it's not all the way up. I'm going to go ahead and check everything. Also, a little tip to, for you guys. Do not clean these out with water or anything. Leave them just like they are. Um, if you put the water in there and it does have a little bit left, it couldn't change uh, the reading. Just take the paper towel and clean this off. And I actually have a little storage spot on the side of my battery. Um, I put this down in a little uh, piece of plastic. That's a plastic bag. And I store it right here on the side. Okay, so we want to add just a little bit of water to one of our cells. You can do this a couple of different ways. You know, if you're pretty good, you can use that whole gallon jug, but I like to use a smaller one. And I also like to uh, just uh, put a funnel in there. And I'm going to add just a little bit at a time because I do not want to overfill this. So you just want to kind of go slow. You can see I've got a little bit of a spill around the cap here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a paper towel and a little bit of water. I don't want it soaking wet. I just want it just moist. Making sure I still have my rubber gloves on. I'm going to come in and I'm going to clean this up. Same thing goes if you get any spilled on the floor or anything around while you're doing this. You can clean this up really nice. Once you're done with your paper towel that you used for cleanup, you can put this down in a an old shopping bag or put it down something plastic so pets or kids or even you don't get a hold of it and maybe get uh, some acid on you. 
So just dispose of this properly. Now we're going to pop our caps back on. Now this is a golf cart 6 volt battery and it's made a little different. You can see these are come off really easy, the tops. You just kind of twist this like so and it kind of pops the top. I'm going to tap them a little bit, knock off any battery acid that might be up on the cap. And you're just going to remove this, set it off to the side. And you'll see the cells are a little different. These things are made to deep cycle. I'm going to test this the exact same way I tested the other one. Guys, by all means, be safe. Rubber gloves. Make sure you're wearing some safety glasses. Clean up any spills. Try not to get it on your clothes or on your skin. Definitely don't get it in your eyes. Just be safe. So guys, it's Darren with East Woodland Survival. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the woods.